I thought I'd talk about all the lessons I have learned from self-help throughout the years. I've been on quite a self-help journey and through experience and obviously I'm not a young creator, I thought I'd tell you what I have learned through my life. This isn't the usual type of self-help video where it's, it's just like love yourself etc. It's going to be quite itching my nose it's gonna be quite a maybe quite a sobering video and the first one is that no one is really happy we have this illusion of happiness and I realized no one was happy because when I go for my jog you know I'm like I'm into running I do running so when I go for my running I run along the seafront and I purposely run alongside the mat these are like massive houses these are like millionaires row these are the top of the top houses they're like beachfront houses and it's not private you can run alongside it so I usually run along there and I thought to myself one day it's like these people have worked so hard they've got their big house they're not even enjoying it you never see them sitting outside enjoying the sunshine they're always working or what I found more commonly is that they're all building extensions onto their houses None of them are happy. There's always construction work down that millionaire's row. Part of the human condition is that we're never happy. And I, when I see and I watch these people extend their massive mansions and they don't even need the space. These are like mansions. These are massive houses. They're extending their houses. They're building swimming pools. They, are, they have all this money and they are not happy within themselves. It made me think to myself that no one is really happy. Not even these people with so much money, they have these beachfront houses and they're just not happy. And even me, I drew it back to my own experience. I was in my damp, moldy flat and I wasn't happy. And then I moved and I thought, as soon as I left the damp, moldy flat, I'd be happy. But as soon as I got here, it's almost as if the feeling of happiness didn't last because once I'd moved to a flat, that wasn't damp, then I wanted the tumble dryer. I still wasn't happy, I wanted the tumble dryer. I wanted the tumble dryer to be happy. I wanted the big American fridge that I can put a glass in and get ice. I needed that to be happy. Happiness is, is pretty much an illusion. You have to try and aim as much as you can, I think, for contentment. The second piece of sobering advice I learned is that relationships can't make you happy and I recently saw a reel on Instagram and I tend not to take my advice off of Instagram but this one was quite apt because it said if you're not happy single you won't be happy married and the end part of it they'd they'd made it into some kind of stupid meme and it was like you know get a cat cats love you better than a man but in a way, it almost, it didn't need that second part. It didn't need that part because I was literally sitting with this for days. And usually when you watch content, it's disposable and you never think about it ever again. But this reel, it stuck with me so much. If you can't be happy single, you won't be happy married. That's what made me think about how, you know, marriage is seen as the savior. Marriage is seen as the savior for women get married, be happy. But if you cannot be happy single without a man, you will not be happy in a relationship. That relationship will not be a band-aid for your problems. You need to find your own happiness and your own solace without a man. And maybe this is what the universe is teaching me because I always wanted a man so much. If I had found a man, I wouldn't have a channel now. I wouldn't have gone through this journey. I wouldn't have developed as a person. I, I wouldn't have been happy because the root cause of my unhappiness would not have been solved by a man, would not have been solved by being in a relationship. It would have almost just put a plaster on my problems and those problems would have resurfaced maybe not three years later, maybe five years later, they would have resurfaced after I've had children. That feeling of not being happy, that feeling of not being fulfilled, it would have resurfaced. Me putting a plaster on those feelings, I would have got caught up in the honeymoon period, 
And then after that, I would just be like everyone else. I would be sitting there thinking, what do I have for me? I generally think the most dangerous time for a woman is when she's become married, she's had children, and then she wakes up 35, 40 and thinks, fuck me, what am I gonna do in my life? That is literally the most scariest time for a woman because she feels she's missed the boat. She feels that she hasn't got a career. She feels like she's been a mum for all these years and she's gonna wake up and she's gonna have that moment at 30, 40 and it becomes such a dangerous time for a woman. That's why you need to get your happiness single. You need to find a sense of fulfillment that does not revolve around a man because that is the only way you will find true happiness. If you find contentment and happiness and purpose without a man, and then when you do find a man, it will add to that. It will add to that contentment that you've already got and that's already there without a man. And I realized that way too late, plodding along in a career that was comfortable and to society, in terms of society, I was fine. I had ticked off the box of stable, secure job, looks after themselves. But I wasn't happy because I was not doing something that I loved. I was not helping people. I felt that I wasn't adding anything. I felt like I was literally, and still am to some extent, making money for other people. And that ultimately did not bring me happiness. So, I just literally, if I sit there and I think, oh, you know, I want to find someone, I sit there and I think, if you're not happy single, you will not be happy married. And that goes through my head on a loop of trying to find happiness first, and then the man will come, then the man will follow. Ultimately, it's too much for a man to ask. It's too much for a man to ask if you say to him, make me happy, fulfill all my needs, make me happy, let me just give up my career, you now have all of my needs, all of my happiness depends on you. That's way too much for a man. That's when they run, that's when they get cold feet, that's when they backtrack, that's when they act out, that's when they cheat. When you give over all your happiness to a man, that's why happy single first and then relationship. This is gonna be a tough one and I'm probably gonna get called toxic for this. And that's why I started videos, because I started videos because I wanted to generally put out the truth. And I thought, if I just put out the truth and what I believe, ultimately that will get interest and I'll find my audience. But the third one is controversial. But if you're a woman and you're overweight, do not go on a dating app. It is brutally honest. When, when I think about being overweight on a dating app. I just wish someone had told me, do not go on the dating app, take a year off, take two years off, get to being healthy, get to being right mentally, and then go on the dating apps. If you are overweight and you go on a dating app, you are literally just gonna get so hurt and so broken as a human being. And I wish someone had told me that, I wish someone had told me the truth. And the truth is a lot of men do not like overweight women. And that was hard for me to really take in. I wish that people had been honest with me. I wish my friends had been honest with me. I wish they told me that I was fat. And that's kind of sobering to hear and it's like I wish people had been honest with me. It's only now that I actually feel self-esteem. Whereas before I would let men treat me badly because I didn't feel good in myself because I was fat. I had to feel grateful for a day. I had to feel like oh I'm not really worthy of a decent man because I've got no self-esteem. I've let myself go. It is the toxic message that nobody wants to hear. I I had been brainwashed basically by thin white women telling me to be fat was okay, to be fat was fine, to just tell myself affirmations, to love myself was enough. When the results I was getting on the dating apps were telling me the opposite. 
the results were telling me people didn't want me, people weren't approaching me, and we have to accept that we live in a culture where thinness is seen as beauty, and if it's right or wrong, that's that's not for me to say. I wish that someone had told me. The thing is, I knew I was overweight. It's not as if I woke up every day thinking that I would spring out of bed a size eight. I knew I was overweight, but I couldn't change. And I couldn't change because I, I, I didn't love myself. And I didn't love myself big or bigger. And call me shallow, but I needed the thin body to feel good about myself. I could not feel good about myself fat. And anyone that says they do is lying to you. It is cope. Generally, people were not interested in me. And I think it's because, you could argue it's because I wasn't happy in myself and I was projecting out an image of not being happy. So, when I was on the dating apps, the only people that I would attract on the dating apps were people like me, people overweight, people not, people overweight, people not happy, people where they didn't want to be in life. And it's because that was who I was as well. I was listening to something Goggin said, said recently, and he said, you attract what you are. And it sobered me up so much because I was always told, love yourself, love your body, you know, be curvy, etc. Being fat, this is really honest, but being fat, I could not attract the type of man I wanted. The type of men I wanted were not interested in me because I was fat. They would ignore me, wouldn't look at me. They would just see someone that was fat. They wouldn't see someone that was kind, intelligent, a good person to be around because all they saw was a fat person. And if I had had this video five years ago, it would have saved me a lot of pain, a lot of heartache, a lot of me being on the dating apps. Because yeah, you can get a man on the dating app, but you're not gonna get the type of man you want you're gonna get someone that isn't healed and that also has problems. You know, losing weight is such an emotional thing. I would go on like a five, six mile run and then afterwards I would just sabotage with a pizza because I felt so unhappy inside because I hadn't felt the love that I needed. So I would just sabotage with like eating a massive pizza to feel better because I just felt empty inside. And I was watching all this motivational content. I was getting myself hyped up. I was doing the exercising, but then I would just sabotage with the food because the food is what I would go to, to take away the pain, to push everything down. I would just go to the food again. And it's only when I dealt with the emotions of, Girl, you're going to have to be happy single. There is no way about it. You're gonna have to be happy single. You're gonna have to get a purpose. You're gonna have to find a purpose that gets you out of bed every day. That does not revolve around whether you have a man or not, or re revolve around whether you've had sex. You, you need to find a purpose. You need to help other people and then it will come, then it will come when you've changed and you've got to a place where you have found that inner happiness. That's when it will come, that's when all the abundance will come. Because if you're not happy first, like I said, you're just putting a plaster on everything. And I just wish that people were honest with me and they told me the truth, is that that is how the world is. and. If you're overweight, do not go on a dating app. And also what I learned is that I need to create a life where I am around different people every day. That is, that is the one thing I learned is that if I live a life that's ordinary, I'm gonna be like this forever. 
going to office, not meeting anyone. Because for me, I give advice to people that are in my situation. The majority of people, they will go to work with the same bunch of people every day, might go out once a week at the weekend with friends. And then they rely on dating apps to find people. Like I said before, do not compare your love life to people that have status. Because people that have some kind of status or social media presence, they're in a different world where they can meet new people every day. There's more opportunity for them. And I thought to myself, I want a life like that. I want a life where I can meet different people all the time. I can build a network. I have will then have more opportunity to find someone. And the only way you can do that is the cheats way of just using your body or you can make yourself into, they're equal. So you're on the same level playing field. Then you have more access to, you know, hang out with people like that, talk to them, message them because you're on their level. And that's what I thought. I sat to myself one day and thought, shit, I can't let my life go on like this where I am literally gonna work there's no one, there's no one at work. What am I gonna do? And then I'm on the dating apps and then hypergamy kicks in and I don't wanna date all these dusties. So the only way is to raise yourself up and put yourself in a position where you're equal to these men. And, and that's when it will follow. Or at least if it doesn't happen, at least you're trying. And that's what I thought to myself one day. I was like, okay, these men don't want me but what can I do realistically to make this type of man want me? And that's what I thought one day. I was like, I am going to change my life because you attract what you are. And if you're sitting there at home, depressed, no friends, out of shape, you will attract someone that's like that because sadly you do attract what you are. And it's such, it's such a sobering thought and it's what, Nobody tells you. People tell you all this shit like manifest, get into a higher vibrational energy. But at the end of the day, you're only going to attract what you are. And don't be mad at, you know, don't be mad at the girls that are just hot and they've pulled, you know, the rich man because trust me, that is an anomaly. The majority of rich men want their equal. The happiness only came for me recently when. I realized that I needed to move back near my family to save my mental health. I was trying to find a man to fill all my needs and it was making men run. Whereas now I'm near my family, so my family fulfill that need to be around people. And even financially, I was looking for a man to fulfill my financial needs. I was looking for a man to be a provider because I, I didn't want to be poor. And I would subconsciously seek out these rich men that would treat me like shit because I had not secured that financial need within myself. That's what I realised that if I wanted a stable man, if I wanted a rich man, if I wanted someone that was emotionally open, I needed to be all those things. I needed to be my own rich man. I needed to be my own stability on my own without a man. And I needed to, as best as I could, be happy in my own company. I needed to, you know, as I say, fill up your own cup. I needed to fill, fulfill all those needs myself. And not looking for a man to be my financial stability because, you know, I wanted that successful life. I wanted the nice house, etc., in the garden. And I was like, well, I can't get that on my own. And then I thought, why not? Why can't I get that on my own? Why can't I be my own man and get that on my own? You know, you see my journey, I'm like halfway there now. I feel secure in my flat. You can't look for a man to be the provider. And this is why I feel bad for men because a lot on the internet tells men to be a provider. And really these days, you, you can't. You can't look for a man to be your sole provider. You have to go out there and be your own provider. And if people are saying, yeah, you're a boss bitch, boss babe, you just have to quiet that side where people are saying you're being masculine, 
no one will want you, you're, you know, you're being a boss babe. You just have to like quiet that down. 